Yeah, we're back. Two. Yeah. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, USA Women's Star Katie Augustine. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by Balanced Palate Nutrition for Peak Performance and the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby. And Stephen, welcome home, my friend. Thank you, Matt. Oh, oh, how I've missed you. You've been all over the place. You've been in Jamaica. I wore the, I wore the red, white, and blue uh, island shirt for you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, peop- J- Jamaica, Cayman Islands, uh, back at the weekend and off again next week. How long's the flight from New York City to Jamaica? About four and a half. Four, four and a half. Okay. And uh, Cayman Islands, do you, how do you get there? For, what's that? Uh, yeah, it's about, uh, it's about 45 minutes from Jamaica, so presumably the same from the States. So did you go from Jamaica to the Cayman Islands? Yes. And how long was they that? Have, they have planes. Flight? They have planes and things, yes. Was it like 45 a 45-minute flight. Fred Flintstone plane? Not quite. Not quite. Jet. A jet? Two jet thingies. Okay. All right. All right. Could you stand in the plane? Yes. All right. Okay. So anyway, um, we're going to get to all of that in a second. So I'm wearing the shirt, the, island, the red, white, and blue island shirt, not only to welcome you, but because we had Team USA's Women's Eagles playing in the Super Series uh, recently, and it's concluded. And we have a very special guest, Katie Augustine, on the horn. But I just wanted to get your skinny on um, all things in the rugby world universe right now. What, what caught your eye? Well, this Super Series has been probably the most important thing uh, in American rugby. So it's been two weeks of games where the U.S. Women's Eagles have tested themselves against the best teams out there, New Zealand, England, Canada, and France. So really important for them, and, and really important because um, it's about getting games. And the women's program historically has not had these competitive opportunities. So the fact that USA Rugby uh, were able, and Emily Bidewell in particular, who's the director of high performance, were able to get this thing um, arranged and get it played on U.S. soil at Chula Vista uh, was fantastic for our women's program, absolutely necessary, and um, uh, a fantastic two weeks for them in terms of opportunity. And they did do what they had to do in terms of ABC, always beat Canada. Yeah, uh, results-wise, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll get more insight here from Katie in a second, but um, yeah, good to beat Canada, always beat Canada, as you say. Um, you know, some, some losses against the other three teams. Um, you've really got to look at sort of performances and, and perhaps where we are now compared to where we were rather than just looking at the, at the scoreline. But um, you, you've got to play these top teams to improve. It's the only way you get better is playing better teams. So it's absolutely the right thing to get these people on our soil and to take them on head to head. Yeah, you know, and the Twitterverse was a fire or a flutter, if you will, I guess. Uh, about the, the lack of fans and the tent situation with the players and stuff like that. And, and you know, everything's kind of a first sort of going forward right now for Team USA's women's program. Getting them on the pitch and getting them quality matches is, is first and foremost, right? And that happened. So, yeah, maybe the, the, the situation wasn't the, or the logistics weren't the greatest, but I thought the, the Twitter... Um, angst was way overboard. Yeah, I thought it was overstated. I mean, those fields in Chula Vista are superb. Um, it's a beautiful environment, climate, great facilities in terms of um, dining, everything else you want, gym, all the rest of it. So, so, so really, yeah, I, I think that's overblown, overstated, and is a bit of a distraction from what we should be focusing on, which is the rugby. And I'm talking to you, Scotty, Sumu, Stevenson. He was, he was all over it. He's a long way away, and he's, he's coming from a different background. That's right. I, I, I think perhaps his issue is that um, he felt it was almost disrespectful, that it should have been housed in a, in a better environment. Yeah. So I, I think that was his angle. It wasn't being mean-spirited. It was just like, come on, these girls deserve more. No, I, I get it. And, and I get the fact that him saying something like that is a necessary component of getting it better the next time. Absolutely. So I take it all back, Scotty. Kudos. Uh, but in the meantime, let's not waste any more time. We have somebody that was there and had a great seat. Katie Augustine. Katie, can you hear us? I can hear you. How are you? Uh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're better now that you're with us to, to, to brighten up this set for a second. Uh, Katie, so the Super Series, tell the folks at home a little bit about that. Let's see. So it was in Chula Vista, I think, like you guys mentioned, um, at the Athlete Training Center. 
Um, it was four games with the top five teams in the world. So we got there on June 22nd and we trained until the game started on June 28th. So as Steve and I said, the results were basically that you, you beat Canada, which I always say is the most important thing. ABE always beat England or anybody but England and ABC always beat Canada. But at, from your eyes as a, as, a, as a player, was it a successful Super Series for Team USA? Yeah, I mean, it's always disappointing uh, not to win. But I think we're in a stage right now where we're building and trying different combinations. And a lot of those girls got their first cap in November, right? So like Steve said, it's just about playing more game and getting more comfortable at this level and uh, building and growing. I mean, it's hard for us because we're all from over the United States, right? And so when we get together for three weeks, that's a really good opportunity for us to learn and grow and get used to each other's tendencies. Well, you know, you bring, you bring up the fact that you get together for three weeks, and I'm looking at where you are right now, and it looks as though you have a day job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a day job, uh, like many other girls do. And, I mean, obviously we have students too, but... In order to play, I have to work. So some of us were working full-time jobs while we were away. So let me, let me get this straight. So you are working full-time, and you're the full-time hooker for Team USA right now, or you're on the squad. And you, it's up to you guys basically to come up with your, your expenses on your own. You're not getting any funding, really. And there's, there's no per diem in place as of, as of yet, or is there? Uh, it depends on the tour. I mean, I think since I started in 2012, we've definitely grown. But um, we do cover a lot of our own expenses. So like in the last World Cup, for instance, uh, when you were overseas uh, in Ireland, did you guys have a per diem while you were overseas? And did you have a per diem while you were in camp in the USA training for that? So we received a per di- Well, we received a lump sum at the end of World Cup. Um, for the month that we were over there training. But while we were in residency, um, that we were just getting our room and board paid for and and meals. I mean, in 2017, we were gone essentially for two months. And, I mean, San Francisco rent is high or Oakland rent is high, but uh, our per diem for that month was enough to cover one of the two months of rent. Sorry, Steve, you're a member of USA uh, Rugby's Congress, and you're you're – up to speed on all this stuff. Is it going to, do you think there's going to be some change or is it there, there gradually? Has, there, there has to be some change. I mean, it's better than it was, as Katie alluded to, but it was terrible Absolutely. about two years ago. I mean, they, they, there should be absolute equity between men and women in terms of per diem for domestic camps and for tours. I mean, that, that's a non-negotiable. Um, that's brought up at every Congress meeting. There, there are various people who are, are you know, um, who push this quite hard. doesn't mean it happens. But the, the, there's just no excuse. It's 2019. Yeah. Um, those things should be gender neutral, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. And and I, yeah. I think the I think the board is pushing hard. I mean, Emily's certainly pushing hard. Um, I I mean, she's done great work. I I don't want to fault her. Uh, she's doing great work over there. It's just like you said, Steve. It is 2019, so I just don't think people realize how much we sacrifice. Yeah, play for the national team. Uh, absolutely, and, and you know both genders. I mean, everyone sacrifices to represent your country, well, particularly in the U.S. and in Canada and, and tier two countries. I've been in Jamaica recently, so I can talk even more about this. So, so people forget. Yes, it's an honor to play for your country, but it shouldn't cost you money. Right. And in this day and age, there, there shouldn't be any disparity. Um, I, I think with regard to the women's games, you, you've seen obviously women's soccer. What a fantastic story! Dominated the world again. And be, with that success, uh, and with some, you know, airtime, they're, they're, they've got the leverage, and they're, they're beginning to, um, no, not beginning, but they're advocating for, for better terms, and they're getting them, and they should. Um, other sports are in the slipstream a little bit. Um, you know, it always defaults to the argument, what does women's rugby bring in? And obviously, commercially, there is a difference right now between the attractiveness of men's and women's rugby, but at some stage... You just have to say, for this to grow, we have to invest in it. 
And this is the time that we have to invest in women's rugby. Yeah, and I think I think the message is getting out there loud and clear that this is what what the rugby fan wants. They want the equity. They want they want to see both teams represent the nation as well as they possibly can. So an interesting point here is the distinction between sevens and fifteens. So our sevens women are are well funded and are co-funded by the Olympic Committee as are the men, and both teams are now city number two in the world. So right now the women's fifteens program is somewhat the poor relation of our national teams, and so. How can we expect them to right. improve if we don't give them the chance? Right, and and can be that that stop that storefront that, that storefront like Mike Friday says, use the women's programs to be the storefront, shop window, shop window, shop window. Yeah, there you go. Shop window is probably over your vernacular over here. I think we call it a storefront. But anyway, uh, I, I'll defer to you guys. Uh, but Katie, it was actually a, another one of the women's national teams that got you interested in rugby to begin with. It was the U- United States women's Hockey team. It wasn't the soccer team. It was the hockey team because you are a puckhead. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would say it was that 1998 women's Olympic team that really made me want to play for a national team. I I was lucky enough to play hockey in college, um, but I was also lucky enough to go to a five-year school at Northeastern, which is where uh, I ended up playing rugby that fifth year. Uh, My mom wasn't thrilled to be a uh, ice hockey mom. I know you know the hours are kind of hard. Um, so she was supposed to take me golfing for my oh, eighth grade birthday. I don't even remember what year that was. <laughs> it's golfing. been too long. Yeah. Golfing, yeah. And her and my aunt had a little much too much fun the night before. So um, a hangover is what got me into hockey. But what? if I don't have to take you golfing today, you can play hockey next year. Deal. Sold. Done. Yeah. And, and cut to, <laughs> cut to uh, Northeastern University in the Boston area, hockey, goalie, yep. and then Go in your fifth year, you just picked up rugby just like that. Yeah. Um, I had a couple ice hockey teammates who were friends with the rugby girls, and it was my fifth year, and they said, oh, come play. Come play rugby. And I said, oh, I don't know if I should do that. Like, well, at least come to our rugby Easter. So um, after, after a lot of wine and a lot of four square tournament, they convinced me to play my fifth year. All right. And, and I never looked back. <laughs> and you played flanker in your first match. I played, yeah. I don't even think I knew that I was playing flanker, but I was playing flanker. And you told me off camera yeah. that you studied up a little bit the night before reading rugby for, rugby for dummies? Oh, yeah. The rugby primer, rugby for dummies, anything that possibly helped me on the field. And I think it only, I only knew what a scrum was, pretty much. So, so you've, you've come a long way. And then it would be fair to say you're a veteran of this side. So what's your, um, what are your ambitions then? Are you, you planning on going to the, the next World Cup in New Zealand? Or what's your, what's your near-term goals? Uh, my long-term goal is to see this team succeed whether I'm on it or whether um, I retire. I mean, obviously, it would be great to go to another World Cup, um, but I just want to help develop the whole team. And if that means helping somebody else take over my position or that means me going to the World Cup, um, either is fine with me. Um, wow, I think. A, what a teammate. It's, it's, uh, just, yeah. Just, just to be clear, though, I mean, you've already been to two World Cups, right? So this would be number I, I, three. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Yeah, it would be well, yeah, which would be awesome, um, but I've done a lot in my career, and I just think it's help, It's helpful to develop players. You know, I've been to two World Cups, so I'm a veteran, and if I can help somebody brand new to the pool, you know, just with my life lessons and develop, then that that helps bring my legacy along. All right, speaking and, of your... And the 2014... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Speaking of your legacy, what, speaking of your legacy, what does the number 212 mean? Oh, that's my eagle number. Aha. Uh-huh. You got it. <laughs> he, he asks this every Man. week. Well, you know. Uh, anyone coming on who doesn't get this by now should be shot. Uh-huh. Well, Lou, Lou Stanfill had been on and been asked and answered it correctly and then botched it the second go around. Mm. So, oh, no. Yeah. So, all right. So, what, does, what do you guys need to get over the hump, so to speak, and to beat a New Zealand? As, as every American that doesn't know rugby will ask why our – women aren't beating New Zealand, right? 
yeah, I, I mean, I think more the more time we play together, uh, the easier it is to read off one another's cues. Um, but obviously, we live in a huge country, so everybody really has to commit to their development plans outside of the national. I think um, the WPL, it's been around for a while, but now more and more players are able to play together on those clubs. And the more people we can get playing and training together, I think the easier it'll be to beat the New Zealanders of the world. And just just going back a little bit more into your history, you played for Boston and for Beantown? <laughs> yeah, I did. Interesting. I started off. Yeah, I started off with Boston, and then when the WPL was created, I eventually made a very difficult decision to move to Beantown, and then eventually made it out here and played the Berkeley All Blues. Yeah, we've got similar situations down here in New York City. We have Steve Lewis with All Blue. We've got the New York Athletic Club. We've got yours truly with the New York Rugby Club, who's got the best women's program. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we got to all do I mean, in, in New York, of course. I'm not saying I'm not right. going to. No, gonna, you're good. But I am saying the best women's program. I am saying that. Anyway, uh, final thoughts, uh, Katie. Uh, what about, did you have any temptation to play sevens more? Um, I played with the Boston Bells back in the day. And then when I made it into the 15s pool, we weren't really allowed to play much sevens. So, I don't know. I like running into things, not around him. Yep, and speaking of running into things, you come from a hockey background, but a lot of people and a lot of people think that hockey and wrestling make decent transitions into rugby, but not at your position. You were a goalie. Yeah, um, I mean, I certainly think that uh, rugby and hockey are a lot alike. I mean, I can see a lev running around the field just like a center plays hockey, uh, but goalie was definitely a little different. And I think the one thing that I took away was. My goalie warm up. I do my racquetball warm up hockey before every rugby game. Wow, we got to we got to get that on videotape and see exactly what that is. Maybe Steve and I can demonstrate for the other people in the studio here. Not happening. Not going to happen. We'll, yeah, <laughs> hamstrings, quads, everything will be popping. People will be wondering what those sounds are. Uh, final final question for you. you: You had a shiner in your <sighs> Team USA profile picture. How did that come about? Nick James, she's a prop for the United States national team. Out of Dublin, Texas? Out of Dublin, Texas. That's right. Was that, yeah. was that a little uh, north-south uh, battle there going on, or was it an accident? Uh, I don't want to say she did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you but what. I think we were playing, yeah, we were playing on, against each other. It looks and great in the photo. Really it looks great in the photo. Oh, thank you. My mom really loved it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, see, you should have played golf. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. We, much, we really appreciate it. And we're, we're happy that you guys are finally getting some more repetition as a team in terms of tests are concerned because there was a, a dark period there where you guys were getting nothing. And, Stephen, why don't you uh, finalize this on those thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's just great to see a squad. There's a relatively new squad that head coach Rob Kane is putting together, um, getting these competitive opportunities, and they need more. And so whatever the union can do, World Rugby can do to ensure teams get more playing time together, that's the key to all of this. So I would wish you and your teammates all the best. Um, stick at it. You know, it's got an interesting 18 months to that World Cup, and it'd be really good for you guys to, to, to make the top three. I think that would be real progress in the next World Cup. Absolutely. It's an exciting time. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. And on that note, on behalf of Katie Augustine, Mr. Steve Lewis, I'm Matt McCarthy. For Rugby Wrap-Up here at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in New York City, signing off.